<laughs> Animal rights activists are furious over a picture that is being circulated right now of a man and the eight-foot shark he caught. <laughs> Let me bring that up for you. <laughs> so, not only may it be what is considered a trophy killing, but what has the activists really upset is that the man is laying on top of the shark nude. So the photograph was shared by wildlife presenter Annika Svenska, who tweeted, Who is this man? Please retweet. Find him and ask him why he did this. Where is the humor in humiliating slaughtered animals? While Marie Levin, uh, founder and executive director of the Shark Research Institute, told the Huffington Post... Uh, <laughs> that's disrespectful to the shark. So you guys are, if you're watching right now, uh, and you can also see this in the YouTube video, you're seeing a picture of this, uh, of this man and this, sh <laughs> this shark, <laughs> not exactly. He's like a, he's like worse than George Costanza on the couch, <laughs> yeah. but at least George yeah. was wearing some underwear. Right. And, uh, I'm, I'm going to take the image down now. Okay. Just so you got a chance to see it, but here you get the are. idea after a second. I mean, here yeah. you have two people, two different people that are saying humiliating slaughtered animals and disrespectful to the shark. Like this shark had any idea what's going on. He's not getting released back into the wild. So Debbie, the shark and Charlene, the shark aren't like gossiping about, did you see, <laughs> did you see, uh, Frank's picture with the naked guy? Oh, what a loser. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like humiliating the shark. That's going a little too far. Do I think the guy, do, do I think that this guy should have done it? No, there's something mentally wrong with this guy. Yeah, obviously. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, but does he identify as a shark? Who possible. knows? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it could be identifying as an even bigger right? <laughs> animal, but you know, whatever. Not judging, not judging. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so. I mean, the only thing the shark cares about is that it's not currently <laughs> in the water. Yes, that's all that matters to the shark. The shark doesn't care. You know, it, it doesn't have its feelings aren't hurt. You know. Yeah, I mean, the, but the, the, yeah, the, still not right. I mean, obviously. You know. Now there are two issues here. I will side with animal activists if sure. this is a what they call a trophy killing, yep. which apparently maybe there's a season for this, or mm -hmm. you have to have a license to catch shark, or at a certain length you have to put them back or something. I mean, this was an eight foot shark. This was a yep. huge shark. Um, but they're actually looking for this guy right now. Uh, if you zoom in on the face, just the face, please. <laughs> um, you'll you'll see that he looks a little familiar to some people and they thought that he was the head coach for one of the Florida football teams, mm -hmm. uh, possibly the Gators or something like that. I'm yep. not sure. And he caught a shark. Why didn't he pose with a gator? <laughs> <laughs> right. But, but that coach actually, uh, actually denied it and said that that's definitely not him. They thought it was someone else and it wasn't that person. So they are on the lookout for this guy. And, um, you know, it, it's not funny that the shark is dead, you know? No, <laughs> but, yeah. It's a little funny with the picture. I mean, I come mean, on. Everybody gets a good chuckle out of yeah. it, even though the guy was kind of a, a douche about it, you know? Here's here's the other, the other thing. I feel like anything you see online, you should be skeptical, skeptical of. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. this could easily be totally fake. Yeah. Um, totally photoshopped, and it's going viral, and... And everything. it's like the I'm let's sure bring that picture up again, right? Let's <laughs> do some analysis. Um, it's like it's like well, there, I can tell you as a Photoshop expert that the shadowing mm -hmm. is on point. If they did do a good, uh, Photoshop job here, yep. uh, I'm thinking it's actually real. Yeah, uh, to be honest with you, just just being a uh, Photoshop junkie myself and everything. But um, what I will say is actually surprisingly enough, and I didn't even write this down. There was a shark attack story that was just online that turned out to be faked. Oh, the girl? The girl in the cage. Yep. Yeah. It's that like was a webcam fake. girl or yeah. something. And uh, porn star. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like and um, she, she like, went into a cage and then basically faked that she, she had a cut on her leg. And it looked like a real cut. Um, but uh, they were saying that, uh, like, experts were saying that with the way shark's teeth are lined up, there would have been other marks. And, yes. and it turned out it to be It would have been jagged and, like, cut yep. off. So. Yeah. And uh, so what they're thinking is she might have cut her leg on the cage. And then uh, turned it into this thing to try and get it to go viral, and yeah. yeah, it's a mess. And you know what? Yeah. We were just watching this uh, caught on camera or something that was, that's uh, hosted by Nick Cannon or something. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know it was on, but we were looking around who, yeah. and he showed a video of an Australian guy 
that faked with his girlfriend or something this lightning strike at the beach like it almost hit her mm-hmm. and they showed how the video production went into it, it got like millions of hits on youtube mm-hmm. and everything and um you know there comes a time when we can't believe what we see or hear anymore you know i just heard yeah. i just heard a um a program that this this uh this company is is working right now that can imitate the voice of President uh, Obama, President Trump, and Hillary Clinton. And they have a full-blown conversation between them that they just typed out a script and they, like, read it and everything. Now, the inflection in the voice and everything and the expression on how yep. they talk, uh, which may be the same thing there. I'm probably just... <laughs> <laughs> inflection. At least I use the word, you yeah. know? But um, they, they don't have that down yet, yeah, which yeah. is... That's not too far down the, the road. Oh, man. I mean, these programs... There was also a a, uh, a news story that just came out that robots are now teaching other robots what to do. Like, dangerous territory. <laughs> Skynet is coming, people. <laughs> Prepare yourselves. So, <laughs> no, man. It just gets crazy. But, um... So, yeah. Sharks. <laughs> <laughs> Naked dudes. Like, he should have at least released it during Shark Week, for crying yeah, out loud. Yeah, absolutely. When does that roll around? Yeah. That's summer, right? It's got to be coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about this one. This is kind of another funny one. Uh, in Aberdeen, Scotland, two students left a pineapple on an art exhibit table at Aberdeen's Robert Gordon University as a joke and returned four days later to find that it had its own display. So I just posted that picture up there for yeah. you too on screen. And um, <laughs> Yeah, I watched a video on that. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty exactly. funny. So uh, when the students Gray and Jack came back four days later, the food had been proudly put inside a transparent display box. And curators, it appeared, had mistaken it for an actual art piece. Now, what's interesting about this is a, and I'll get to a quote from her uh, coming up, this Natalie Kerr. She's a cultural assistant mm-hmm. at the university. Uh, she said she doesn't know how it got into its own display case, but that the display case itself, the glass that you put over it, yep. would have taken three to four people to lift up and put yeah. onto it. Um, so, <laughs> I'm just imagining these Scottish museum people yeah. like walking up, seeing this pineapple on a yeah. table, and be like, "Oh, look at this, Lenny! <laughs> oh, oh, it's oh, a man. great piece of art." <laughs> Get the case. Yeah. What's it doing? It's unprotected. It's gonna start rotting. It's like so they uh, panic because they think that this piece of art is exposed to the elements. Yeah. Was, it, was it an indoor museum? Because yes. it, it looked yes. like um, it might have been the light. No, no, it looked, yeah, it looked it like was, an outdoor yeah. um, thing. And uh, you know, cover it up, and then. Um, when when they went back, uh, they heard like a, a, someone talking to a person that worked the museum, asking like, "What do you think the artist? What what was the meaning <laughs> of the positioning and everything?" You know. And these guys are uh, just thinking, "We just put a pineapple on a table." Yeah, that's well, all. Not that, we you know what probably happened too is that, like, <laughs> could you imagine like serious art snobs, right? Like in the in the museum itself, the curator type yeah. people putting the glass display case over it, and they bump the table, and the thing falls over. What position? was it in? Yeah. <laughs> it's ruined. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so here's what here's what uh, this, this kid said, one of the <laughs> perpetrators of this. Uh, he said, I saw an empty art display stand and decided to see how long it would stay there for uh, or if people would believe it was art, said Gray. Now, Natalie Kerr, the cultural assistant for the University Art Festival and who organized the display, said the situation was a mystery. <laughs> Nobody knows who put the pineapple in a box. <laughs> but um, here's something interesting, too, that I was thinking about. There's great artists. Okay, yeah. I went to an art... My first college I went to was an art school. You know, two solid years of just pure art. Yep. I have an art art background. Mm-hmm. I'm a graphic designer, but in order to get that degree, I had to do illustration, painting, mm-hmm. uh, life drawing, which... You want to hope as a student they hire even <laughs> attractive men to draw, if not attractive <laughs> women as well. But they hire like uh, Susie, who's been retired for 25 years, and she has a, an oven mitt on one hand <laughs> holding a broom. <laughs> and I swear to you, that's what I had to draw one time. <laughs> but um, so I've, I've there's had more all this detail stuff. in surfaces yes, that aren't yeah. smooth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. They're like, you have 10 minutes to draw this. I'm on the ankle. Yeah. I don't know what to do here. <laughs> Um, 
Shout out to shout out to Amanda who took those classes with me and would draw a big X where private parts would go and leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say. I thought you were gonna say. Shout out to Susie. Yeah. <laughs> You're still with us. <laughs> no, no, she's she's inside in the kitchen. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, here's what here's what I always find interesting about art, though, is that. There are some great artists out there. I have a f- couple friends that are fantastic artists. Mm-hmm. Like uh, this one guy I know has does oil or uh, watercolor. No, it's, yep. it's actually watercolor. Watercolor paintings that look like photographs. Oh, jeez, amazing, right? Yep. And I consider that art. Like that mm-hmm. is beautiful things. Expressionist art and everything. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> I can't. Um, <clears throat> I'm being attacked by a gnat. Um, uh, you know, like this stuff. So there was a thing mm-hmm. back in the early 2000s, I believe, 90s, maybe even earlier than that. Yeah. Do you know who Jackson Pollock is? Yes. Okay. So mm-hmm. he, he literally just took like paintbrushes, dipped them in paint, splattered just it, splattered it mm-hmm. all over the stuff, right? Yep. And there was actually a time when I, I believe it, it was one of two things or both. They had elephants paint and they had monkeys paint. And then they took those paintings and put them side by side with Jackson Pollock paintings, and art snobs couldn't tell the difference. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, you know, that kind of stuff drives me a little nuts because, especially the kind of art that fetches millions of dollars. Yeah, I was just about to say, like, do those paintings look cool? Yeah. yeah Are they worth a million dollars? No. No, no. <laughs> I mean, you, you, when you take into account the work that goes into it, the talent that goes into it to, to create, um, a piece of art. It, I mean, just throwing paint at a wall. I don't get it. You yeah. know, but, but mm-hmm. <laughs> the capital in us, capital. Exactly. Us that's right. Says that if there's a market, if there's a, if someone's willing to pay for it, then that's, that's the, the right price. price. Yeah. Yep. That's the right <laughs> price. Yep. So, um, <laughs> it's so funny too, that like the liberal arts knobs are, hate capitalism yet. They will be the ones to pay like three. Oh yeah. For, yeah. Well, and not only splatter that, paint. Listen, I, I I I take issue with you know. It's tough because I got into a kind of heated battle uh, recently over Trump wanting to cut um, the arts, basically, mm-hmm. and specifically it was the the federal funding for arts programs. It was all tied into the federal funding for PBS and mm-hmm. um, NPR, yeah. right? Now, I said that I supported this cutting, not realizing that those were all lumped in together. Yep. And I I just support the defunding of NPR and PBS. And the reason for that is because, do you know how much yep, money... Yep, I do. The CEOs make? Uh, well, not only that. Well, for, 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 okay, and, that's a liberal argument, though. I hate when people say, oh, yes. well, the CEO makes so much. So why, yeah. why isn't the average work? Well, that's because that's what yep. they were willing to pay him. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then I mean? the other thing is uh the uh Sesame Street like studios, like the toys and everything, they make millions of dollars. That's what I was just gonna yeah, say. They the make, product. Oh that my they sell god, yeah. They don't need Street. federal funding to put on a yeah. show. Yeah. And then they also made the deal with HBO. They gotta be getting yep. paid from HBO, which is a private, you know, it's not a government um a government uh Subsidy. Entity, you know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's it's like I think it was like uh, I, I I saw a story on it. And I posted it, it too, and it's it, it's um, Sesame Workshops, right? And right. just Elmo toys alone. Yeah, like why are they putting asking me? You and know, the, for, and the other thing with NPR is, you know, this is public radio, but it, it's all liberal bent. Okay, mm-hmm. I've never heard a conservative voice on NPR. Yeah, and. When you look at conservative radio, the reason why conservative radio can, can exist is because they sell advertising. Mm-hmm. Okay, the advertisers buy into conservative radio because they know that the conservative audience is loyal to the products that are placed on conservative radio or channels, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's statistically proven through through hard numbers of of how much they spend mm-hmm. uh, on those ads and what they get in return. Especially when something is mentioned like go to. Um, for instance, I, I don't I forget what what he pushes for Rush Limbaugh, but let's just say it's Casper mattress. I know that's a big one for conservative radio. Yeah. But if he said go to Casper.com backslash Rush, yeah. well that's gonna track you directly to that you came in because of Rush. Yeah. Right. So they can actually track that stuff. Or 
enter the promo code rush mm -hmm. or something like that. So they can track that stuff and they can see those numbers. NPR is federally subsidized, pushing liberal agenda. Yep. And we have no say over where, what our tax dollars are going to or what kind of programming we yeah. want to hear. It's not right that, uh, and it would be, I would feel the same way if NPR was all conservative. Yeah. I mean, if it's, if it's a uh, public program supported by tax dollars and we're in a country where the people are pretty much divided almost right down the middle. Mm -hmm. So to to uh, force 50% of the people to have their tax money go towards something that flies in the face of everything they believe in, whether you're on the right or the left, just doesn't make any sense yeah, to me. Yeah. You, know? you know what drives me nuts? Yeah. Welcome to NPR. <laughs> and I'm going to talk like this the whole time so that... Uh, you understand where we're coming from, that we're highly intelligent people, and we're going to get to you through soft, soothing sounds. <laughs> and, and, and completely disregard the fact yeah. that uh, someone that sounds like me would burn your house down if you had a yes. disagreeing opinion. <laughs> I mean... <it's... sighs> I um, I tried I think I tried one time to do a whole show in NPR tone and it drove me so nuts I was like I'm going to lose my voice because I'm just trying too hard on this. But they think like oh throw in some jazz music in there and speak softly to the audience and it'll come off mm -hmm. like a like an internet cafe intellectual someone sitting in Starbucks with their mm -hmm. Apple book on their lap and a yeah. little beanie on and skinny jeans and unicorn frappuccino. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Basically screaming yes. in the lowest voice possible that I'm an elitist prick. <laughs> oh, 